Okay, Lauren, you are up. The show is on. I'm going to turn red now. Um, I'm Lauren Fentress, and I work at Knott's Elementary School. I, I've been teaching. Well, right, right. You need to present. Well, I'm talking, aren't I? I can't present my face. Yes, you can. I can present my screen. You can do, you can do it all. Okay. Well, anyways. There you go. Oh, you look great. Now I see you. I normally teach fifth grade, but I think I'm moving to fourth this year. So we shall see how that goes. Um, I don't know if any of y'all are familiar with Flipgrid. Maybe that'll give me a little bit of where I need to go with this. If you want to type in the chat box, if you've used no. it before, you've never used it, um, that might help. I will present my screen. Or everybody can, because we don't have that many people, they can all unmute. And yeah, that works for me too. No, ma'am, not used to it. Okay. No, okay. Um, well, I'll start with really, I last time I started from the teacher side, but I think it would help. I'm going to start, I'm going to log in as my daughter just so you see what it does. And then that might um, give you some more questions before. So what I've, I've made this in the past and um, can everyone see I'm presenting now, right? Yeah. Um, I've made this in the past and it's kind of like a, a, a discussion board kind of, but just videos and they can just talk back and forth um, or just to you. So when they log into Flipgrid, the best thing is they don't have to have an account. It's domain based. So anyone with our domain can open it up. So I just click log in. This would be from a student's point of view um, and they would click their name. And this is this is to my, like, I, I made a group and then I can put my activities underneath it. So if they click here, those are the activities they had to choose from. Or I did one one day and then one the next day and they just went to the same topic and they could pick which one they needed to do. So for example, the first one, division problems. So this is the ones they've already made. Um, they, they create a video and it tells them what they need to do up here. So this particular one, they read a, they create a word problem and they read it, and then the students went back and solved it and wrote it down for me. Um, so they can just make videos, um, and when they click on their video, I'll try not to get too much of theirs. I have 26. Then they can reply to each other here, or they can just scroll through and see everyone's videos. <laughs> so this particular activity, they had like a um, sheet of paper and they they um, solve each person's problem and then I was there to check it as they were doing it. So um, they kind of, that was just one idea. But they they have all these videos. And then here, see students have actually replied to them. So they can go back and ask them questions or do different things. So it's, it's not just like a comment based, it's more personal, especially now that we're all remote learning for sure. I think I'll be using this a lot because at least they could see each other's face more on a one-on-one -on -one and not getting talked over on the, the Google Meet. So, Lauren. That, yes. I have a question. Okay. Um, this one, the long division one, how did mm -hmm. they, what did they use to take their picture of their um, working out their problem? I, we only use Chromebooks. So they just sat right in front of their Chromebook. They had a board and they sat right in front of their Chromebook. He's got it on the ground and he was just, just like we're doing right now. No kadoke. Just wanted to check. Yep. It's Chromebook. So that's the, the kids side. Um, and it's pretty user friendly, I think. And like I said, I like that they don't have to make another account and remember another password. So any questions on the student side before I move in or any questions on what it does? Hopefully I made it. I'll go back. Yeah. Okay. Not yet. Okay. So that's what it does. And that's what it is. Now I'm going to exit. And so when you go to Flipgrid, this is what you see. If you need to sign up, you've never made an account before you click sign up. It's just going to ask you for, let me see. It asks for a location, a grade and your birth date. Um, and it's super easy to log in, to sign up. So then when you come back, you just click log in. And so this is where it'll bring you. You won't have any of these grids if you've never made any before. 
Um, a grid is more like a topic. Like, I don't know if you've used Google Classroom, but you have topics and then activities. So the grid is where you put your activities under. So you can make like a class grid or a, like I did the math cluster six grid. So that's kind of, or literature circles I've done before. I even put ELA. So any um, thing we do in reading class, then I'll put under that topic. So I'm just going to create one for this just to practice because there's tons. They Flipgrid really gives you a ton of ways to make it your own and lots of privacy and ways to keep them from doing things they're not supposed to do. You can change this to make it more um, you. So you could just say Pinterest practice, something they could type in quick if they wanted to, or you can you copy and paste that to them, however. Um, this is what I was talking about, school domain. This lets anyone with the Crotuck domain into your Flipgrid. So you can add others if you want, like if you wanted to G, I don't know if I've never tried like a Gmail or I just know that it keeps it more private so only students and us can enter it. All right, so our it's ready. Here's where you would copy the link, but you don't have to do it now because they you can bring this back up later. So they just tell you it's ready. You can share it straight to Google Classroom, which I love. Um, if anyone does remind, you can do that here too, or you can just copy the link and paste it wherever you want for them to go. I know right now those. There's new um, digital classrooms are big, so you could copy that into your digital classroom if you're into that. All right, so here is my grid now. I'm gonna open it up. All right, here's where I have all my um, options over here in the actions. So when I, I can add other teachers so they can edit it too, that's adding a co-pilot. I can copy this, I can, when I get notifications, like if I want an email every day or every week, or just when something happens, I can choose that here. Edit grid is where all the fun stuff happens. So I can scroll down. Again, I can change the domain if I want to. Um, this is where I can, I can change my status. So I can hide it if I'm, if I'm done with this, I don't want anyone else to see it anymore. This is again how you get notifications if you want them weekly if something if someone's done something or daily or every time a video they'll send you an email. Um, let's see what else is important. So this is just where you personalize it a little bit. You can pick that there's a picture at the top so you can kind of change it to what you want it to be. And then you can just update. All right. So again, this is my grid. This is my topic or my overhead, my kind of like my folder. So when we want to add an activity for the students to actually do and complete, we would click add new topic. And I'm just going to say introduction. And then this is where you type the instructions. So introduce yourself to your new classmates. I can't type to your new classmates. And you would tell them, you know, what to do. You tell me where you live, what you do. I don't know. Um, this is really the coolest part, especially for like summaries. I always bring that up. You can make the videos how long you want them. So they can't go above a minute and 30 seconds. I don't know if you have ever tried to teach summaries to elementary kids. They want to go on and on forever and ever. Um, so that's really a cool thing. Or you can make it long or you can make it really short. Like just tell me your name. I don't know. So that's really cool. And once they hit that one minute and 30 seconds, the video cuts off. This also is an important tool, especially now that we're virtual learning. I know in my classroom, before I even showed this to them, we talked about how to handle it, what you say, what you don't say on it, you know, um, and we kind of made our own rules, and that still needs to happen at, at some point, I'm sure, but at least at the beginning, when you click this on, you have to approve their video before anyone else can see it. So that's helpful um, if you know that they need still some do's and don'ts about what to put on their Flipgrid video. So um, here again is just how you can personalize it. You can click add something like I like adding GIFs and I can just pick a GIFs on how you say it. I can pick a cool thing to put at the top. They have tons of them. And then you can pick that and you can create your topic. And it looks just like your grid, but again, this is the um, the actual activity. So this is what they'll be doing. So when they scroll down, they'll see a big plus over here, like we saw in my daughter's, and they can make their video. 
Um, and again, actions, it's the same format as your grid, so that's really cool. When you click share up here, there again is your link and you can share it right to Google Classroom. You can do whatever you wanna do. Now, if you share this one to Google Classroom, they won't be able to go back to the folder. So you can share the individual activity, if, but you'll have to do that for every activity in the folder if you want them to be able to do more than one at a time, if that makes sense. Um, and then again, I'm gonna go to this edit topic. This is where you have all those ops, options again. You can make it so they can only do it until a certain date, and then after that, they can't make any more videos, but they can still preview the videos. That's what freeze means. You can still see this activity, like all the videos that were made, but you can't make any more. So you can change that here too, like let's say next Monday, if you wanted it to be frozen, and you know, you just don't want people to be able to see the videos, but not actually create one, or hidden, that means no one can see this anymore if you change that. Um, video and selfie style. So video is the actual video. At the end of the, every video they make, they have to take a selfie, which is that picture that showed up. Let me open one so I can show you. Maybe. All right, so see he's taking self, uh, every video they have to take selfies right there. Um, so you can take that off if you want. So you can just say, oh, videos only or selfies only, however you want to do that. You can also try to find the most important parts. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm backwards. This is, this is what I was looking for. They can create, I don't know if you saw all those funny things on their pictures and the hair and the eyeballs. That's kind of the fun part. They can, this is what that does. They can add stickers, drawings, text to their videos. So, this is where you don't want them to do it. You would press none or only the videos they can add that stuff or only the selfies. A lot of times I'll only do the selfies because it takes a while for them to like find their favorite funny look and at least they get one spot to do it um, instead of on the videos too and that kind of distracts the listeners to their videos. So that's personal preference. They can add that stuff to just the selfies. All right, I know I've talked a lot. So any questions on what I've gone over so far before I move on? I did forget to mention it does read it to them, the instructions. So that's really a cool. Introduce yourself to your new classmates. Feature too, they can click um, read. Again, you can still add other teachers. I like that part too, so y'all can share. Did I have any questions? I know I'm talking fast, I'm a fast talker. All right, y'all are so quiet. Okay. Um, some things I've used this for, like at the beginning of the virtual, I just did a talk, like I'd ask a question and they could reply. So that was kind of a nice way that they could still talk to each other. Um, I've done ELA, I've done literature circles where they could go and talk about their book instead of in a group. Um, then I could kind of monitor it later, I liked that. I've done math like you saw. Um, things like that are just good tools for this. I don't know if anyone uses Seesaw, but I was talking to teachers at my in my school and um, Seesaw kind of incorporates this already. I think I feel like, especially when you can share it to your blog, so it, I'm not so sure if it would be beneficial if you're a big Seesaw user, but it works great with Google Classroom because um, it's just another outlet for them to be able to see each other and talk to each other. All right, so let's see. Let me show you how to they make a video. Will you mention two things, please? Because yes. you said you could moderate yes. um, so you can approve. But um, would you also show how they can reply to others or see others or not? Because you can set that up, can't you? I don't know if you can. Like, what do you mean by that? Can you turn off in, in that actions. Can't you turn off reply in your teacher actions? Oh, I'm sure you can. Let me see. Edit grid. Let me see. Um, over there on the right, I think. And you can keep them from downloading their own, downloading their own things. Let's see. I saw it earlier. It's not hard. No, it's pretty. It's, um, 
they're pretty easy to navigate. And if you want to do it, normally it'll let you do it. <laughs> oh, I'm in my grid. Hold on, let me back up to the activity. That's what I'm doing. Let me click on here. I think I logged myself out. Hold on, let me back up. Sorry, y'all. Okay. So when I click here, I can edit. And I can make them not reply to each other somewhere. Yeah, right here. So under the same place I was talking about, they can draw. This is kind of all the, um, they can trim and rearrange their videos. You can turn that on and off. They can allow um, a link to another video. You can turn that on and off. They can like other people's videos. You can turn that on and off. They can reply. You can turn that on and off. But again, if you keep this one on up here, even the replies, they won't be posted until you've seen them. So depending on what you want to do with that. Like all right here, video features, that's the place to look at what you want them to do and not be able to do. Does that answer the question, Miss Kathy? Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. All righty. All right, so I was going to show you how they do their video really quick. If I can get there. So I'm gonna log in as my daughter just so y'all can. All right, so this is the one we just made, the practice and the introduction. So this is where the instructions would be. And they would just scroll down here and they would click plus. Moderated means someone's watching and they, it has to be approved. So here's them make the video. They would just click record, tells them. Hello, testing, testing. They would click pause. They can click pause because they made a mistake. Um, they can click redo. They can click video again and keep going. Or, and then when they're done, they click next. So I want to show you this up here. Um, show topic because, you know, all of them are going to be like, what do I do? They click that. It tells them exactly all the instructions you would type or it would be right there. So that's a really cool feature that it's right there. And when they're done, Hello, testing, testing, they can video again and keep going. And then they would click next. And this is where they get the editing features that I was talking about. Um, they can, I know my fifth graders love spending time on this. So they would, they can pick stickers to stick on their thing. And they can move them around, do whatever. They, they found some silly stuff to do. They could write. Um, and then they would click next. And then they would put their name. If they wanted to give it a title, they don't have to. And then they would click Submit. And then they would hit Complete. And so see here, it's hidden until um, the educator approves it. And then once you start approving them, they'll all pop up here and other students can click on it and listen to their video. All right, I think that's that. Any questions on what the students see or what the students need to do? It's pretty easy. The flip grid's pretty self-explanatory. All right, so I want to show you one more thing, a couple more things. Um, at the top of all this, I probably signed myself out again, but at the top of all this are different categories. Um, my activity just kind of summarizes how you're using it. They have achievements. I don't know. Um, my grids, again, is where all your topics and activities will be located. When you're done with one, I, I'm bad at this, I'm horrible at, you can delete it or you can hide it if you want to use it later. Um, mix tapes at the top. It's kind of like you can make a playlist of certain videos. I haven't really played with this a ton. Um, I'm sure it's beneficial, I just haven't gotten into that. But you can make your playlist. When you find a video you like, you can put it into a playlist. So you can use that playlist for something else later on. Grid Pals. 
it's kind of like a map of all the teachers using this currently. Um, and if my internet works. So these are all the teachers using Grid, Flipgrid. And it even tells you some of them have like um, Twitter handles if you want to get in touch with them and what they do and things like that. So, or Facebook. The really, really, my favorite part is this disco library right here. So um, I think this is what you'd use the most unless you just had a wonderful idea. But um, this is kind of already activities created by other people and even companies come in here and create them. So if you scroll down, um, you, you've you seen a lot of these like Epic, Skype, MSN, Code, Vocabulary, Home, Nearpod. If you click on one of those, it'll bring up a list of all the flip grids they've um, created. So I'm going to click showing kindness and it even tells you the audience and the subject. So here's a uh, activity. Um, you'd have to pick the grid or the folder you want it to be in, but it, it tells you what does being kind mean to you. So this is what the students would see. What is one way you should show kindness to someone in your community or at your school? And it even gives you the link to Epic. So they read this. Um, and then they answer this question on their video. So, the, and it tells you what to do. Assign this book to your students on Epic. And then, um, so all you would do, if you wanted to do this for your kids, you would, I'm going to put it in our practice grid that we just made. And I would just click add. And then it'll take me back to my grids. And you can edit it, whatever part you want to edit. Again, you can change all this stuff that we, um, all the, I, gracious all these moderation and things that you need to change to make it you, any of these features that you want to change. And then you would just update topic. And then you have one already created for you and you can share it into your Google classroom or wherever you want to share it. And they can do that. Um, back to disco library. If you don't want to do it by the companies that created one, if you're looking for something specific, you can click audience over, I just scrolled on down. You can click your audience. So they have preschool, kindergarten, elementary, middle, high. Um, I'm elementary, so I'll look at elementary. And then you can type in fractions or anything you want. And then, oops, wrong button, sorry. Sorry, I lied. You're going to click a, um, a subject. And then over here, we're going to type in fractions. And then, so here's all the ones that have the audience of elementary and fractions, and you can just click on them. And so here's an, hi friends, this week we're working on shapes. Using the grid, we are going to shape hunt for 2 2D and 3D shapes around the house. Your job is to find three rectangles using the shapes. You can kind of say, oh, okay, I don't want that one. And you just exit it, and then you can keep looking at all the others. Um, you can kind of type in whatever you want in here for ideas or activities or whatever you want you're looking to do. Any questions on Disco Library? Because if that's my favorite part or anything you want to find that I haven't talked about. I have a question. Yes. Um, will you show teachers where to go to preview, preview the videos before they're posted, please? So would you go into your library when you? Oh, yeah. Let me, let, me, let me do the one I just made. I see what you're saying. So when you go to your grids and you go to practice or the one, whatever one you're previewing, it won't ask you this every time. I'm flopping back between student and kids, so it's asking me a lot. Sorry, y'all. Um, when you scroll down, I thought I made one. Oh, no, I did not make one here. So I made one in introduction. Yes. I'm still not logged into the right one. Here we go. Like I said, guys, you won't have to do this because I've been logging in as a kid and a teacher. Once you're logged in as a teacher, you sh it should always bring you to this page. All right, so I'm going to click here. Maybe. All right. 
So I still don't think it's logged in the right. I'm just, let me exit. So. Sorry. All right. We're good. I was clicking the link. Okay. So here is one that is not that the one we just made um, when I showed you guys and it's hidden. So you would just click on it and you can watch it. I think my internet's having issues. Y'all know how it is when I'm not silent. <laughs> Hello, testing, testing. So that's how you can watch it. And then you can just exit and you can just active if you'd like, if you, if it's okay it's for the other students to watch. Um, I do, Kathy, I'm glad you said that because I did want to show y'all one more thing. Hello. Um, the grading rubric is really neat. You can even, so you can, you can grade it for them. Like, okay, they had a good idea. They did great performance. And you can write them comments right here. Um, and you can edit this rubric. So if you don't want ideas of performance, you can say, you can edit this rubric and you can add your own. So when you click custom feedback, you can add criteria and you can, let's say you're trying to work on, um, I don't know, I guess contact or you can tell them what you're looking for. Talk loud and clear. Be specific. Not fast. Um, and then you can you can change the scoring. What you want it to like zero out of five, zero out of hundred, and then you can create that. So when you, when you click it, you can add it. You can update that topic. And so now when you click on hers to grade hers. It should have Hello. speech level. Hello, testing, testing. So you can say, oh, she did a 70, I don't know, an 80, whatever. Um, and then that she'll get that feedback next time she logs into Flipgrid. And you can share this, if, you, if this student did a great job, you can share this student's video on Google Classroom or copy the link and send it to them, however you wanna do that. Or if you wanna, just add it to your classroom for other people to um, comment on it. That's, however, I don't know what you would use that or how you'd want to use that, but you can share just this video too. Um, and you can email them so they get an email when you've sent feedback too. I think that's all. And you can, even if it's active, so if you didn't make the video, um, so you had to approve it. Again, you can just hide it if it was not appropriate or if you wanted to take that one off because they had the right answer or however you wanted to do that too. You can hide that, um, activate it. However, like I said, this is very user-friendly. So if you want to do it, you just kind of, it's got a lot of stuff here that you can do with it. You can download their video. You can download their picture. You can duplicate it. You can copy it. You can send it to another um, activity if you need to. There's lots of stuff you can do. And so, again, here's that add mixtape. So you can add it to a playlist and you can share that playlist. Like you had a whole bunch of good videos you wanted to show someone, you can make a playlist and then send that playlist to somebody else too. Tina had a question. She said, okay. when you reuse, and I and she can jump in here and clarify this, are the videos that students made out there for others to see or deleted? So I'm, I'm wondering if she's talking about a mixtape or if she's talking about if you reuse the activity. So Tina, would you like to ask your question, please? Yes, I'm talking about if you reuse that activity, say for another class, would the other classes things be out there? So my suggestion with that, if you have multiple classes would be, um, like if you wanted to copy this one, I would just actions um, and duplicate topic and move it into the grid that you wanna move it into. So it'll say, okay, let's say I want to put it in ELA 2. Do you want to do all the responses or none of them? And you would click only the topic and then duplicate that topic. So then that would be in both areas and you won't have the responses from the other students. Perfect. That's exactly what I needed. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions? Because I don't know if I have anything else to share. Okay. 
Lauren, no question, everybody. there's one more question. Okay. Um, and as, and they may think of things as, because this would really be a great way at the beginning of the year for people to introduce classes. Yeah, I've been brainstorming, like asking questions every day so they could talk to each other. Just, just get that social a little bit. Um, because this, we all know that the reason kids like to go to school and teachers is so they can talk to other people. Mm -hmm. But, but um, Nicole wants to know, can you share a video to Class Dojo? Does as long as I mean anything that has the link, so you can copy this, you can copy and paste the link. Um, it even has a QR code if you want to download and post a QR code. There's no straight link to Class Dojo, but that's not to say you can't copy this and send it. Does that make sense? Does that answer the question? I think so. Uh, I believe so. But if not, Nicole's just being shy. I won't tell you. So I think so. <laughs> if I have to talk, she can talk. <laughs> I'll just use the QRA code. I think I can share that. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, now, are there any troubleshooting or little things that are, that can be kind of flippity or weird that you have encountered? Because you did, because you were a Flipgrid person before remote learning, and you did a lot with it. But then remote learning probably turned that on its head. So are there any tips that you can give teachers? Before Chromebooks were sent out, some of my kids couldn't get on it on their personal devices. So I think something with the uh, at Curry Tech thing happened and I had no idea how to fix it. So if they all have their Chromebooks, I think they should be okay because once they all got a Chromebook, they could get on it better. Um, other than that, in the classroom, it was hard to hear each other. They would get under desk to kind of keep the sound um, quieter because um, uh, they were all doing one at one a lot of the different times. Um, other than that, I haven't had too, too many problems. Um, they want to be silly, which some, I mean, I'm a bad teacher for letting them be silly sometimes as long as it's appropriate. So if, if that bothers you, a lot of moderation would be needed. Um, other than that, I didn't really have a ton of issues with it. Does that answer the question? Yes, but I have a, um, I have a, there on, on YouTube, if you go out and search for this, mm -hmm. they have microphone isolation boxes or podcasting boxes. I saw one, one this morning that was made with a, um, a tub like people stack their mess in and put the lid on and throw it in their garage and then they used a um egg crate cut it in that's what they so and they had to cut a hole in it to put their speak to put their microphone in but mm -hmm. you wouldn't have to do that you could just put the chromebook in the box yeah it would help. It would help you and there's several of those you can make them with milk crates you can make them with tubs so um if we ever go back to regular that might be something somebody might want to look into. Yeah, I have a small class, so I could send one or two in the hallway, and by the time they were done, they, you know, I was lucky there. But I can imagine in a bigger classroom, it wouldn't be a lot. And like I said, under tables worked great too. They had a little bit more, I guess, the sound bumped off of it or something. Um, yes, I know that Jen uses seesaw and so does mary so that's k1 because uh winnie is has been a kindergarten teacher i think she's still a kindergarten teacher and she's been a first grade teacher winnie aren't you still are you still a kindergarten teacher yes she's still a kindergarten teacher tina is a high school teacher donna is a middle grades teacher katina is a sixth grade teacher nicole y'all know each other from fifth grade but um I'm trying to think who else is so uh i don't think older um, students would have a problem, but um, I think I think this would work with little children if they were shown how to do it, and that that might be hard. Yeah, I think that's going to be an issue, especially for the little kids. How I think third, fourth, and fifth um, would be okay because they kind of just um, jump in and figure it out. But I don't know about younger. Um. Um. Hey, this is Carrie. I have a question. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you, 
I hear you. My, I don't know if it's my internet or yours, but it's kind of, uh, okay, good. So um, last year I started it when we went to remote learning. I'd never used it before. And, and my kids figured it out and did pretty well, but I never let them like respond to one another because I was afraid of what they might do. So how would you go about um, establishing the... I think it's my internet, I'm sorry. Did I freeze? I, don't, I can't hear. Yeah, I don't know if it's you or me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's my knots all internet over here. <laughs> ah, can you hear me? Yeah, I could hear you then. Okay. Um, so I, I think I got your question how to the replies. Like I said, I'm I'm kind of like a teacher who kind of lets them I mean to an extent, I don't like let them get crazy, but the when they did reply, if especially with the let's talk from home. Um, I kind of let them do their own thing and I just, I, I had to approve it first. That's the best, the first starting point in the classroom. Um, really the big one that I let reply with the literature circles and those ones I had, I had like starting sentences or like I had points. I, I made them write out what they were going to say first and then they, they just kind of set it on their video. So that's an option. Um, like math, again, I did some math. They had like to create a, uh, a word problem. I made them write it out. I had to approve it before they put it on there. So a lot of that stuff is very teacher. Um, I've watched them really closely on those things. Um, let's see what else I did. Mm, trying to remember. A lot. Well, let me see what this one was. Oh, this one kind of, I, I don't think I let them review on this. So um, how you would use it. I would suggest having stems they can, they can go off on so then they can't get but too crazy. Like, oh, I agree with this because blah, blah, blah. And then they can put their answer in there. And I would definitely suggest starting off with that video moderation. So you have to approve it. And that's for replies as well. So that's a good starting point for um, if you're worried about what they're going to say and what they're going to do. And especially since we don't have them in the classroom, they don't know what our what we um, do and do not allow. I think they're going to really try hard, especially some students, on getting away with silly stuff. So does that help answer that question or did I break up too much because I don't have internet? <laughs> Did I lose y'all? No, I can hear you just fine. Okay, good. Okay, good. All right, any other questions? Did that help answer that question? That's gonna be kind of like a classroom management, what you kind of prefer type of thing. Um, but those are some ideas, if that helps. Kathy, anything else I missed? I don't think so. I really do not. I think you've covered it nicely. Does um, I think you really have explained it well. Does anybody have any questions or want her to review something? Are we good? Let's see what everybody's saying. We're all good, I think. I do think, um, I think it would be, this might be a little difficult for, for kindergartners and first graders at first. I think it's going to be difficult all around. I, I, I think I'm definitely going to still have to have a meet on what to expect and what to do and not to do. It's, it, I mean, with anything in the classroom, but. Well, um, that's why for, for Winnie, Caitlin, what, what grade are you teaching? Third. You'd be, yeah. But I think, um, I think, Winnie, you, hey, did you sign up for Seesaw for tomorrow afternoon? I think it's, is it tomorrow? Is it tomorrow? I think. Yes. If you, I think you, I think Seesaw might be a better, but would be better for you. It's because it's all, it's all inside the app and it's, it's very visual. 
And especially with all this going on, you wouldn't have to go back and forth. Uh, yeah, and also, you're not going to be able to show them what you're – like, you could show for kindergartners and first graders how to do this, and the, and by the third or fourth time, they could do it. But oh, you yeah. No, the first time. <laughs> yeah, but you can't show them. You can't say, okay, come over here, and then the next one, okay, if they have trouble, you go over there and help them. It is through their Curry Tuck Gmail account. Yeah, but they don't have to make an account. They just have to have the at Curry Tuck when they log in. It's kind of yeah. like, it's really neat. I did forget to mention, uh, I don't know, fifth graders um, are kind of shy about the way they look. They're starting that. So I always try to make a video first, and it kind of sets them off. Um, that, that always helps from what I found out. That, that, makes, that, that's, that makes sense. Yeah. So when they saw me being super silly on the video, they were like, oh, I can do this. <laughs> oh, golly. Okay. Um. I can't think of anything else. If anyone has any questions or if you just don't want to ask now and you comes up later and you think, Oh, I should have asked her that you can just, um, email yeah. her or, or text her on chat. She, she's a chat girl too. Yeah. Yep. So I'm, I am going to stop recording.